Hello and welcome to the 115th and Super Bonanza Bonus Coronavirus Emergency Crossover episode of From Alpha to Omega, along with the boys Shane and Kyle of General Intellect Unit, a fellow Emancipation Network podcast member. This week, I have the returning patron, Victor Osprey, to thank. If you'd like to help support the show, why not join the Patreon gang gang? For only $5 a month, or under $1 an episode, you get two Patreon-only episodes every month, and the right to vote on the next Reading Group series. If you don't have any spare though, just spread the commie word and give us a good iTunes review. Okay, Shane, over to you. Hello, I'm Shane Kilkelly. And I'm Kyle Thompson. And I'm Tom O'Brien. Impromptu uh, session to uh, to talk about the, the the nightmarish reality that faces us right now. Um, oh boy, what a what a fucking what a, what a what a couple of months this has been. Just like watching this slow motion fucking catastrophe unfold. Um, for for the listeners, yes. we're, we're recording on the fourteenth of March, twenty twenty, uh, which is um, really really crossing the threshold of of real Corona fucking nightmare season. Um, it's, it's looking grim folks. It's looking grim. Uh, I feel like things really started to kick off around the 10th, maybe the 12th. Uh, but, uh, it's, it's gotten real all over the world at this point. It's big shit. Yeah. Tom, how are you feeling? Oh, like I was just saying before, like we came on there earlier. It's like I'm such a goddamn borderline uh, psychopath, you know, borderline personality <laughs> disorder person that it's fucking brilliant. It's like it's the best news story since since nine eleven. It's better than the 2008 <laughs> crisis. It's like I'm actually not sleeping well, but not because like I'm stressed, <laughs> but because like my brain has gone into overload. Like last night, I was like. I woke up this morning and I was like, the whole night I was like, oh, maybe I should diagnose it this way. Uh, you know, the dream was just like, have they thought about this? You know, and I was like, just like my brain has got in, gone into hyper low drive and it's a disaster. I'm just literally out of bed there. I had to like lie down for two hours to calm down. You you, you have seen history in a Petri dish um, and it's it's seized seized you. Uh, the, the the geist has, has, has caught you, Tom. That's right. So, like, you know, first we had the AIDS virus, you know, epidemic, and now we have, you know, the farce of, of uh, the coronavirus. <laughs> yeah, nice, uh, nice uh, Brumaire uh, callback there. Um, thanks, thanks. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, the the kind of oh Jesus, the, the the big news. I think well today. I mean, amongst all the other big news is. Um, like the, the 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 Brits are basically just letting it happen. That's the the new strategy, right? Is to just like, oh, we're just going to let it roll and then get herd immunity, which is, as far as I can tell, and as far as the WHO can tell, an absolutely horseshit strategy. <laughs> I mean, we'll we'll see. But yeah, uh, I think it was a couple days ago. Johnson said we might just take it on the nose, right? And on the like, chin, on the chin, on the chin, yeah, yeah on yeah, the chin, yeah. yeah. Sorry, <laughs> I wasn't trying to be pedantic, you know. No, no, I appreciate the correction. Um, yeah, uh, shit. Yeah, so that's that's really something. Um, fortunately, we we are not taking that response here in Canada, but uh, yeah. But you are by the default because that's what America is pretty much doing. And if they're doing it, you're goosed anyway. Yeah, well, the situation in America seems to be that the federal government has sabotaged any preparations, um, but the states are desperately trying to respond individually. Um, So, for instance, I was going to travel to Colorado uh, this week, um, and earlier uh, last week, um, the governor declared a state of emergency in Colorado. And the reason to do so wasn't because the outbreak was so bad but because they couldn't get any funding to diagnose cases. So they instituted a state of emergency to get emergency funding in order just to be able to diagnose who had the disease. What the fuck? (laughs) Incredible. Oh, no. Yeah. Uh, The best story, have you seen the best story of all is that there's some, like the the leading uh, company with like, uh, vac- with a new vaccine that looks promising. Gilead. Yeah, those guys. It's someone, they're, they're actually trying to 
uh, sue the Chinese government. The Chinese government wants to buy it from them, but they won't don't want to give it to them because they're afraid that the Chinese government will actually say, oh yeah, and then just produce it for free and give it to everybody in the global south. So they're blocking the distribution of it. If ever there is, is like a fucking learning moment, a teaching moment yeah. for people about capitalism, this is the motherfucker. More than World War II, probably. Oh yeah, like those people... Like they're following their the business interests of their company. This is perfectly in line with capital logic. But damn, that is beyond criminally irresponsible. Uh, they, it, you know, it's very much like you know cutting off your own nose to spite your face, right? Like this is this is a capitalist firm deciding to tank the capitalist economy even more than has already happened in the name of private financial interest Mm -hmm. yeah i mean like this is i i mean i'm sort of cautiously optimistic about the way this could play out right i mean there's there's a couple of scenarios that like i mean well more than a couple there's an infinite number of possible scenarios but like some of the worst ones are just that like it's not possible to recover from this there's no there's no way of like really mitigating it and it just shaves off two percent of the population every year forever which is like just species breakdown kind of stuff but then the, the more optimistic kind of end of it is that this is a real like emperor's new clothes moment where the like the capitalism has suffered these kind of like legitimacy crises forever and like it's it's especially lately like it's kind of like the defenders have gone from you know, capitalism is the best system to, well, it's not the best system, but it's what we've got. And it's like, well, you know, it's, and you keep, or it's the most efficient. And it's like, well, it's not actually the most efficient, but it's all we've gotten. And then this happens and the legitimacy of the whole thing just goes up in fucking flames. Um, and it's not to say that it's impossible that the, the thing will recover its own, itself or that there'll, there'll be a kind of reactionary kind of future out of this. But like, um, like it really does seem as if this is like, you know, people are kind of like really because it's a concrete thing instead of like instead of socialists going on about like whether Trotsky or whatever Adolf came off well in some debate in the fucking 1670s or whatever all that kind of shit you know that's none of that stuff is convincing to anyone but when they see Joe Biden saying that he would veto fucking you know uh, universal health care during a pandemic I think that hopefully that could be just the, the crack that fucking just takes the whole damn thing down with it in, in legitimacy of like and then just that then naked self-interest of these things like so that that fucking company Gilead doing that kind of shit but also like I mean I've, I've been I read I read the FT and they're like oh you know uh, after B- J- Boris Johnson's fucking announcement of the of their strategy they were, the FT were like you know uh, Johnson is keeping Britain open for business during the pandemic and it's like all I hope that all of you fuckers have just signed your own death warrants that's the, I hope that's how this plays out that like this will be remembered and will be will never be forgiven <laughs> like it, this is this is this is the end for you fuckers and I kind of think maybe maybe they are kind of aware of it that this is probably the end of the fucking road for capitalism it's the end of the road for their own fucking careers and all that other shit and it's just desperately trying to claw it back right they just ran a story with an atom bomb going off in the background right oh yeah on the alphaville thing where it's like oh yeah this this is fucked this is the crisis or something like holy shit like they they know the game is up um i mean i might eat my words on that later that's possible that's that's always possible but like i have a stack for you actually let's just let's just pause and 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 say that the company's name is gilead <laughs> have you watched the handmaid's tale at all I haven't no i hear it's good stuff though I, I i've read the book i've read the book they fucking called it Gilead. It's That's like unbelievable. Scumbags. Fucking Absolute scumbags. Hell. You know. Was, which is basically the name of the like incredibly repressive, like trad patriarchal uh like post fascist America, right? Yeah. They're basically yeah. like uh, organic Christian Saudi Arabia. You know, yeah, yeah, exactly. That's 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 totally a scenario. Yeah. So I mean, like Tom, do, do you see any like what, what do you see any positive paths forward for this for like for socialist organizing or whatever? Because like it, it, it is looking grim, but like there seem to be seeds of opportunities here. Oh look, I think this it could be a very radicalizing moment, but you know, uh, probably not immediately. 
But I, I think, like, I don't know if you saw the stat. There was a stat out from, uh, from England, uh, and it was asking people, I think, under the ages of, like, 50 or something, do you think the government is handling it well? And it was, like, 70% no, 30% yes. But if you look at people over the ages of 70, all the, you know, all these people who could die, literally they literally could die. The 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 in favour of the Tory response was eighty five percent, either eighty or eighty five percent. Talk yep. about death drive. That's just, that's unbelievable. Lemmings off a cliff. Like I, I know that I I know that 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 lemming thing was staged by Walt Disney, mm-hmm. but it's yeah. superstition. The metaphor still stands. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Oh man, it's grim. But like, I think that is very grim. But like, I th- yeah, um, yeah. Oh, what was I going to say? Sorry, uh, let me think. Oh, you go say something there, Shane, and I'll see if I can get it back. Yeah, I mean, oh, this this is. I mean, it's been a very interesting couple of months, right? Of like, um, you know, because it wasn't hard to see this coming, right? That like this this is like. The, the thing had the potential right right from the beginning or from January or whatever to, to spiral out of control. And then, like, looking around and taking an honest assessment of the way the world system works right now, it was very hard to believe that it would ever get under control, right? Like, th- I think that this, is, this was an entirely predictable sort of outcome. Um, and it really does show just how utterly degenerate and, like broken down and fractured the whole damn thing is that like we truly do have a society a global society that is micro optimized for the accumulation of capital and for nothing else it doesn't do anything else aside from that um and all of the little kind of like i guess the hobbesian sort of argument like the leviathan as a thing that protects you from harm or whatever it is horseshit. Like it is, it is absolutely and completely invalid. This is the proof yeah. positive of that. Um, all of those myths and all of those ideological constructs, all of the kind of cognitive apparatus of capitalism, is crumbling before our eyes in real time. And yeah, fucking hell. Like what what comes after, right? Because I, I think there there is probably opportunity especially if both people mobilize to like you know do like mutual aid sort of networks and stuff and like if it proves the efficacy of like planned healthcare and stuff like that there's 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 potential in that but then there's also as always potential of huge fucking reaction um well i'll tell you shane i'll tell you what's going to happen uh jeffrey epstein is going to be come from his hidden his undercover (laughs) he's going to he's used his billions for the last three months you know he had a lot of like fourteen-year-old female scientists, scantily clad, <laughs> in his labs, working hard on it, and he's going to come up with a with a cure. That's the, that's the only that's that's the only hope. Is this some level of QAnon that I'm not aware of? You know, this is this is like really <laughs> down the rabbit hole. <laughs> Fucking hell. Probably they, yeah. they probably got there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. No, the, the the Lolita Express was actually a scientific mission in addition to being a sex trafficking thing. <laughs> um, Fuck. Yeah. Um, Damn. I mean, yeah. Like you know, think about where we've come in the last year, right? We've gone from Jeffrey Epstein. To fucking systemic collapse <laughs> is not looking good for capitalism. Like you know, like both both sides of of the American political elite being and, and the and the economic elite being implicated in that whole pedophilia thing, and then <laughs> saying that they would. They wouldn't uh, introduce public health care even to stop a pandemic. Uh, it, it's just a bad look. But like, if if they're if they're able to like on the nose just go in and fucking hang Jeffrey Epstein in his <laughs> prison cell and turn off the cameras, yeah. you know, all that kind of shit. If they're if they're willing to do that and just say, oh yeah, no, he just he just commits suicide. Like, you, we, we, there's a good chance we actually will never know what the death toll will be if this gets out of hand because they'll just fiddle the statistics and it'll be done for like uh, national security. But I yeah, I think 
you know, they've very much, uh, Mr. It shows how brittle capitalism is. You know, it's a, like a highly optimized. I always remember like, like Chomsky giving an, an example of like, you know, say like how, uh, man-made designs are usually highly optimized and brittle. Like, uh, you'd say, a computer. He says, "Get your get a get a get a get a baseball bat and smash your computer up, right? And then try and open it or your laptop and try and open it and try and turn it on and see what happens." We said, "Like if you did that to a person, they'd probably be fucked for a couple of weeks, but then they'd be back and they'd be grand, yeah." And like so, our system. If you want to get towards like that idea of uh, cybernetics and modeling the, you know, the organism, like. Yeah, I would. I would hate to see what kind of like organism capitalism would look like <laughs> if it was in the natural figure, world. You know, it'd yeah. be like a stick insect or something that can only survive by drinking nectar from like one plant somewhere, and then if it got windy, that was it. They were all fucking or dead. Like, or like those frogs in like I don't know Nepal or whatever, and there's like they're halfway up a mountain, but there's a hot spring, and there's like a six inch kind of like microclimate in which they can survive. That's like three inches above the surface of the water. And and three inches down from like the freezing air or whatever it's like um it's 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 highly reminiscent of like stafford beer's critique of the whole thing right that like it the the the, the system presents itself as totalizing and kind of like like leviathan right like it's this omnipotent kind of uh, powerful force but it, it's actually uh, through a systemic analysis it is extremely fragile um and like, I mean, look, Marx realized that, like, he was like, look, hey, this thing tends towards collapse all the fucking time. It just, like, manages to catch itself before it collapses a lot of the time. Um, sometimes it doesn't and it all fucks up. But, like, I think that's this is a much healthier way of viewing it rather than the kind of, like, um, I guess, like, post-structuralist thing of, like, totalizing, you know, ideological structure that is is unchallengeable. It turns out that this this thing is remarkably fragile, Um you know. Yeah, well, so we were talking previously in the kind of the green room about, like, uh, Moore's uh, analysis of capitalism, um, which we will be covering on an upcoming episode in, in depth, but that was recorded before all this stuff went down. Um, and, you know, he sort of points out that uh, nature revolts against capital. Well, nature is a little bit in specific, but basically, like... You know, similar to the barbarians versus the Roman Empire, the longer they're in contact with the empire, the stronger they get. <clears throat> and um, it seems like, you know, this kind of, as you were saying, uh, Shane, this kind of thing was totally foreseeable. Um, you know, you're, you're saying like your, your, your parents' uh, friends had been talking about this for two decades mm -hmm. or something. Yeah, because they're like farm science people or whatever. But like the whole thing that like, because uh, I've been saying it for a long time that like all you really need is a better cold virus, like one that's a bit more stealthy and a bit more lethal, and that would be the, the end of the fucking world. Basically, it's it's like even you know people who aren't especially well educated could could see this shit coming from a fucking mile off, and like it's it's not like it was illegible, you know? Yeah, it, it, indeed, it was always kind of like the content or the um, subject matter of you know like Discovery Channel scare shows about pandemics like this kind of stuff would come up in those kinds of like real banal uh sorts of uh formats yeah uh, between, but, between the hitler is hitler still alive and did the yeah. aliens cause 9 yeah, yeah yeah exactly yeah, yeah between them yeah. two shows mm -hmm. yeah 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 exactly <laughs> <laughs> we, we would we would get those like oh the ultimate pandemic um yeah yeah so that's all foreseeable what I'm kind of interested in is, like, how does this interact with the falling rate of profit? Because we see that, um, you know, profitability has been very low. They've used all kinds of central banking, uh, fiscal trickery to uh, try to sustain profitability since the last crisis. Um, but, you know, we've got people like, uh, you know, Mark Carney saying uh, it was in January that basically the monetary policy that has been used up to this point will not be effective 
in the next crisis, i.e. now. Which has been proven um, so far, right? Like, that they, the Fed keeps heaping money onto the fucking bonfire, and it just, like, they inject a 1.5 trillion or whatever, and it, it evaporates within 15 minutes. Like, it's... Yeah. yeah. But, like, I think it... Like, so what they've always... They've literally just been doing, uh, essentially, most of the time, just been doing monetary policy... You know, so, you know, they've just been using interest rates. So what's the other major lever? Fiscal. And they will, it, it will have to be fiscal. And th- like they're stuck between a, a rock and a hard place because like literally you go into the centre of London here today, right? I think most of the probably the, uh, you know, the the theatres and all this, the cabaret things, right? They're not going to be able to sell a ticket. They're probably not going to be able to sell a ticket for six months. OK, so if they're paying rent, Right, they're going to go bust. So it means that every one of them in the, in, is, is going to go bust. Right, and every, and every other cafe who is in around that area, they're all going to go bust. The renters aren't going to get any money. They're going to go bust. Like, so all the people are going to lose their jobs. And it's across the sector, across every sector, it's essentially that, right? Unless you're producing food, uh, telecoms, uh, energy, you know, there's a few, there's a few core sectors and then everything else is dead right now. So like it only it only takes one major sector to knock out the whole thing. That's just how these work. The it, it, It's a cascading effect. Um, so what we're like, so the thing is, like what they can do is like a bit of old Andrew Yang. Let's get our UBI. And I'm not even joking. Like they literally need fiscal policy to give like uh, money to everybody to maintain but like if they do that like let's think about it like it's okay to say you or me we're not earning that much money and they give us like you know whatever thousand dollars a month and it helps us to tide us over and you're living a frugal lifestyle but let's say like you're some billionaire and he's got 40 staff in his like even his mansion or whatever like are they going to allow all of that stuff to go into disrepair so then they're going to have to decide to like okay well we're going to just basically depending on how rich you are we're going to give you <laughs> x amount of money uh-huh. and then it just becomes plainly obvious that they're just giving fucking money out to whoever they want that they've been doing that anyway to the banks but when it comes to the like everybody has to get it and not just a few banks to keep the system going it's like that like you know I've always been talking about MMT because I think it's like I think it's essentially it's kind of like the it describes the monetary system correctly I think Marxists are afraid of it but uh, like so I think that's very radicalising though because it lets people just know like like it did in World War 2 you know they just spent whatever the fuck we needed to survive we spent it and it'll be the same now but now I think because I just think the cat's out of the bag more on that than it was then like there wasn't that body of people understanding it so I think it's very it's very dodgy for them like well, fucking hell we are starting to see some forms of sort of like early fiscal policy being implemented in the form of like making it easier to get EI, um, so uh, and, uh, sorry, employment or unemployment insurance. Yeah, yeah, so like that's that's like a very early form of fiscal policy, right? Because you're basically doing UBI. It's just for the, all the people who are going to lose their jobs, probably myself included. Uh, it's, it's not looking very good yeah. right now, uh, but uh, we'll see. Um, and uh, I do expect that will ramp up. But what I'm wondering is, is this going to be the crisis that actually tanks the system and raises the rate of profit? Like it, it'll be the it'll be the bonfire of value that they've been putting off for so long. Yeah, that that has been put kicked down the uh, kicking the can down the road again and again and again and again. Is this going to be the 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 catastrophic crisis that either a ends the capitalist system or b raises profitability again? Uh, yeah, because the, the 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 falling rate of profit is still a thing. Whatever recovery would come out of that would be low compared to what happened after World War Two. But um, I don't know. I don't know, Kyle. Like, as in, I think there could be absolutely incredible amounts of capital destruction. Like, like literally. Yeah, no, I, I, I agree with that. But it's still the case that the means of production have just advanced to such a degree that I don't think we're going to see 
a recovery that strong. I think if we see one with, that would be almost unbelievable from the last 40 years of capitalism, like it would be shocking how how uh, much investment would happen um, because like we're just used to like peanuts, right? But I, I, I do think that the falling rate of profit will uh, moderate that recovery. You, you mean moderated or like, like what, what Sup- do you mean? Like, like, like suppress it to some degree, right? Like, that no, it, it should w- help it, us. If you, well, how, <coughs> how is that? Well, like, you know that you've got your, your profit is your surplus over your, yeah, your surplus over your C plus your V. And if your V is still fairly much the same, but your C is being destroyed, you know, that people can come in and buy assets to, uh, pennies on the dollar. Like literally, you think you've got a, say you've got industrial production going on and you've got a, you got a, I don't know, a carpet, right? Let's say a, a carpet factory, right? And you're not going to be able to produce. You're going to be no market for it for like six months. Like it's, you, to mothball it costs you money. Like it literally would cost money to mothball. So like that that capital was degrade. Like more than likely, people will be able to come in, salvage it at pennies on the dollar, opening up a new ca- factory. And what does that mean? That that's your rate of profit. Uh, your C being reduced and your rate of profit rebounding. Like that's what they stopped the last time. That's what it. No, that that's that's the reason why you get these surge recoveries after a massive cap, uh, destruction of capital, but. What I'm what I'm saying is that when you look at the overall historical trend, uh, you are not going to see a uh, recovery of the same degree as previous recoveries after massive capital destruction because the historical trend is still in effect. No, but I think the his, the historical effect, like the last time they actually did a a burn burn the whole system down, like that was literally the American government's. Uh, plan in 1929 was like literally to uh, to to what's the word I'm looking for to liquidate it was the, the treasury secretary was like liquidate 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 I think is what he said in a memo like uh, now like in the other one since that because of the social problems that caused they couldn't do liquidate 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 so like you know they never liquidated say all the the debt they actually propped up the values the asset values after 2008 you know they dipped down but they they flooded with uh, cheap credit and they bought assets like the, the central banks went in and they bought worthless assets at parity you know so so like so they didn't allow that thing to happen so that's why we didn't have a recovery for profit in the same way as we would have had in an actual uh, bust and boom. So I think that this time, this time it might be actually very difficult for them to do that. Not not technically, but I think politically, Bec- you know, and I think that might be why the rate of profit might. Uh, but that's why they might actually end up liquidating more. And I wouldn't be surprised if the capitalist class came together and said, Actually, this is our chance, lads. We can blame it on a fucking virus. And uh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't actually, because the, the left, we might talk about, oh, there's, there's been Corbyn and there's Bernie and all that. Wishy-washy bullshit. There's no fucking, like, there's no Soviet Union there. There's no, like, there's no, um, you know, Spanish Revolution. There's no, you know, there's none of any of this stuff going on. So they're, they're much less in trouble I think that's not to say that that might completely radicalise all of us and our kids and stuff like that and in 30 years time there might actually come from this a proper left like if we had if you think about like Bernie has been a reaction to to Occupy to 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 2009 like well this is this could kill more people than fucking like this could kill more people than the Second World War or you know, if they get it direct together, it might destroy the economy worse than the Great Depression. <laughs> like, yeah. and and so like that might be way more radicalizing. And you're starting from a a, a more developed socialist commie base, so that might have 
you know, that literally might make a 20, a 15 year jump and everybody's a fucking hammer and sickle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, I mean, I'm not even joking. I'm not even joking, especially somewhere like America, where even the most paltry reforms are blocked by the system. Like the legalism of the system has blocked stuff. I mean, like if you don't allow like pressure valves like in in Ireland or PR or something to to if you make it actually nearly impossible for a left resurgence to happen in America, like that's just like that puts off the reform, but that just leads to like the whole thing blowing a, a goddamn gasket. I think I'm in agreement there. I think it's um, well, I mean, op- the sort of op- the optimistic side. I mean, is is in agreement there. I think that like the the system has pushed itself, or like the the, the capitalist class have had this like dictatorship of capital for whatever many years, forty years, whatever, and they've pushed it to such a breaking point that. The it is rob- they have robbed themselves of all legitimacy. Like I think, like trying to make a kind of trying to make even like a social democratic kind of argument now would be functionally impossible. When it's like, oh, you have ju- you have Biden doing the whole thing of like he'd veto a fucking healthcare reform during a pandemic, and it's like, okay, this isn't funny anymore. This isn't fucking cute. Like this is you know this this is this is the breaking point perhaps. Um, and you know th- there's there's always the possibility that, that I'll, I'll, I'll eat those words. In fact, it's likely that I'll eat those words later. But like. Um, it's kind of hard to imagine the emperor's clothes going back on at this point. You know, it's like the the, the just absolutely naked degeneracy of the the fucking system of of, of Gilead trying to prevent the fucking um, test kits and the cures or whatever from getting out there. Um, like, how, how do you walk back from that? You know? Yeah, I mean, you want to talk about like like you you look at someone like Martin Shrelly and how much people hated him, but this is way beyond that. In terms yeah. of, and the kids are reading Lenin these days. You know, the kids are reading Lenin while they're while they're in between fucking delivery shifts. So we, we kind of wish they weren't, but yes, well, yeah, <laughs> totally. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, I'm cautiously optimistic, sort of. In a, there, there's a branch of the possibility space that corresponds to cautious optimism. So, so in a uh, space like uh, Canada here, uh, where there is a little bit more room for. Uh, flexibility or response than in America like we've currently in in Alberta we've been um, going through a massive wave of government austerity um, that has been uh, brought in by the Tories and a part of that was you know quote unquote finding efficiencies in the medical system Um, but that kind of reactionary wave, I think, is just going to crash against the rocks of the reality of a pandemic. And, like, your case for that politically could not be weaker. I mean, yes, uh, Calgary is going through a long or sorry, uh, Alberta is going through a long term recession and that's going to make things fiscally difficult. But at the same time, we need those doctors and nurses like in BC, they're even calling people up from retirement to deal with this, um, and and so like even a social democratic movement as massively incompetent as the one in Alberta uh, with the NDP can be lifted by this situation just because of the obvious case for the expediency of a coordinated public response. Uh, it, it is just the case that, like, you look at a place like America where that obvious uh, path is something much more hypothetical and less institutionalized and real, where it becomes a lot less clear what's going to happen, right? Like, so I think for, you know, comrades who live in places with actual existing public health care services and unlike the UK they have a <laughs> functioning civil society <laughs> they don't have British brain rot yeah <laughs> yeah they're not completely brain rotted by the media there is like room for sort of like immediate action in the case of places with like a lot more reactionary or limited uh, public spheres or civil civil society um, like America or the UK, then, yeah, you might be looking at trying to build something a little bit more long term. Um, it, it really depends on the situation. Yeah, absolutely. Um, just a thing you mentioned there kind of brought, uh, brought some to, to memory that, like, 
I'm not sure if we've ever really touched on it on the show, but like this whole thing of like the austerity programs being couched in terms of efficiencies and then, but like you, you put them under like a systemic sort of lens or a cybernetic lens and they're not efficient in the, the, the slightest. It's just like what, what they, what they cloak up as efficiencies is just bullshit. Um, and that like truly efficient systems or like systems that are resilient to these kind of perturbations require redundancy. They require care, like, uh, carefully tuned, uh, like layers of redundancy and so on. Um, so that, that's another, that's another layer of, I think the emperor's new clothes problem here that like, um, if if anyone ever believed that horseshit about like neoliberalism, like they're going to be on even weaker footing than ever um, for like oh you know it's it's the most efficient thing to just close a hospital like they'll they'll be marched to the fucking town square and beheaded if they they try that line again you know yeah and like you know it's just like Tom was saying and you were saying that uh, these systems are very brittle they've been optimized for for profitability or for minimizing costs in the case of the public sector right so even in Canada the system typically runs at 100% capacity. So if you ever have a perturbation like this happen, there is no slack. There is no redundancy. The redundancy that they've been able to find, like in a place like BC, where they have a social democratic party in power and not some just yokels and fucking Bay Street uh, fools... Uh, who are just there out of business school to try to find whatever efficiencies they can to try to increase the rate of profit um, is bringing people up from retirement, right? And that's it. That's all we got. We don't got anything else. It's it's basic queuing theory, right? Like that, like you you can't operate at a hundred percent. Like you have to fucking like it's, I don't know. It's 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 absolutely insane, right? That the absolute basics of systemic mathematics or whatever is is has been illegible to these fucking freaks for so long. Um, you know because because they, they have highly motivated reasoning. They're they're the the fucking lapdogs of capital. I don't know. Yeah. Well, what do, what we need then, you see, is they're going to what this is where the zombie apocalypse come from because they're trying to re-engineer like to get dead doctors out to help us <laughs> and it goes wrong it's like the way they gin the numbers for fucking elections or whatever by having the dead vote like they'll just have, they'll have yeah. like, doctors on the books who died 30 years ago um, it's like well, how, and gesturing to their like crumbling hospital wing it's like what do you mean there's a crisis look at all our doctors <laughs> well it, it kind of reminds me of in China when they they built those show hospitals right like uh, in Wuhan, you know, they, they rush built, what was it, like three hospitals within the space of like a week. Um, but they didn't have any staff to staff <laughs> them up. So they were like, ah, uh, yeah, just don't, uh, don't uh, look at this too closely. Don't look behind the curtain, you know. And this thing is, we're, we're all seeing behind the curtain now. Um, were, were they just a bunch of shipping containers laid end to end or something? Like, is that, that what those hospitals No, are? no, the buildings were real because, like, China can build buildings. Yeah, like, they're China pretty fucking good at that. <laughs> can get shit done in terms of infrastructure development in a way that we certainly can. It's just that, from what I remember, the, the hospitals were built and then they had, like, you know, maybe like a tenth of capacity being used because they just didn't have the staff to the personnel to run them. Can, can I, can I, can I just, can I just point out that like, uh, that Kyle's jumper, like that's a, that's a bit of a butcher's apron jumper. Where, where did you get this jumper from? It's a very, it's very union Jack. Uh, like, <laughs> like. <laughs> for the, for the listeners, it's a, it's white and red and a kind of very dark blue in stripes. It looks cozy. Yeah, so I, I I bought this from Amazon Japan on sale uh, back in the day, and uh, the reason I, I was wearing this originally uh, was because I expected to be doing uh, the 18th Brumaire recording today, um, and uh, <laughs> I, I wanted to have my Republican tricolor on as a sort of ironic comment on the... Uh, the failure of the Republican project in France. But, uh, you know, I feel like it's equally good as an ironic uh, comment on the failure of uh, the Union Jack and of uh, of the Stars and Bars. Or, sorry, the Stars and Stripes. Certainly the Stars and Bars as well. Yeah. I know, I was going to say, like, dude, 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 this could be... I mean, this could be the end of the fucking United Kingdom, basically, right? They're like, in a couple of weeks, when all the infrastructure is crumbled, the, the Scots are just going to wander off on their own and be like... Um, Seriously? Yeah. It's not even a joke. Bur and, and burn in the Union Jack. And, and in Northern Ireland, like, like, what's not being done in Northern Ireland versus what's being done in the South... You know, that's one thing I wanted to say as well, is, like, uh, the response of, like, like, Britain, which is the most capitalist country in Europe, 
versus the rest. Like it's been like atomized and, you know, the longest, you know, since what, the 1700s versus a lot of these other places only 150 years ago. Compare like Britain to what, what's England, what's going on in England to so what's going on in Ireland. Like, I don't know, like the late, late is like the big kind of chat show in Ireland. Uh, and they had like the whole thing. They had no audience, did a special episode last night. And it was all about like coronavirus. And it was all saying how we must come together as a society. And they walked to the set of like the empty uh, um, soap opera Fair City. And they interviewed some doctors there. And it was like, it was like, it was actually really goddamn well done. And the sense of society you have in in Ireland, like, say, compared to, like, London, where I am, is just incredible. Like, so, and I I think America, probably because it's the head of capitalism now, it, it seems to be as atomized as 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 England is. So it's, it, it, I find it no coincidence that the two of them that have been most inept, you know, even Italy hasn't been as inept ha, as these boys. And they had their city states in fucking thirteen hundred. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, it, it really is remarkable, right? Because like, I mean, I've uh, I've kind of been because I'm I'm from Ireland originally, and I live in in Scotland. But like, I've been struck by that kind of contrast as well when I very occasionally go home. Well, it's not really home anymore, but like, go go back to Ireland to visit, right? That like, because like you're you're driving around and the the radio is like all like reporting on like even the popular radio channels are reporting on in like industrial policy and stuff like that. And like, there's a sense that like people take things seriously and feel like there's a stake in like the general operation of the society. Whereas like, that's not absolutely not the case at all in, in Britain. It's just this like horrific fucking freak show um, in comparison. So I'm not surprised that like the Irish just jumped at it and were like, Oh, this is a thing to take seriously. This, this, this is not fucking around territory. Um, like, yeah. Like, la- is it last week they banned the Irish uh, rugby team from playing in Italy? Like, was it last week or was it two weeks? Like before it had really, taken off like I remember reading it and they did it so not it would have been like a week and a half ago and I was like thinking god that's a bit excessive isn't it you know like but like you know there's no way that the English uh, RFU or whatever would have done that there's just mm-hmm. it, it just wouldn't no, have happened absolutely not I think that's the sort of thing that I've, I've had trouble sort of explaining to folks um, over these couple of months as, as this thing has developed is that like it's count, it's kind of counterintuitive, but the kind of the Nash equilibrium is to act before it's obvious you need to act in all these kind of cases. Because like, if you put the if you put the seatbelt on when you hit the wall, it's already too late, you know. Um, but then if you wear your seatbelt for every journey, by definition, it looks like an overreaction, you know, because you didn't get killed by it, by it, you know. So it, that's the that's the stuff that's really kind of counterintuitive, it seems for uh, for folks and like. Um, it makes it kind of hard to, especially like, so like, imagine the general, like, kind of mathematical illiteracy of, of most people, including me, I'm fucking terrible at math, but like, I have some intuition of what an exponential function is, right? So imagine that for the, the population in general. And now imagine the illiteracy of those six toed pony fuckers that actually run the country and just their, their systemic fucking in- incapacity and how dumb they are. And it's like, oh, now, now I see what the fucking problem is. It's like, <laughs> but I don't think they're, I don't think they're dumb. Like, I just think they're motivated. They're craven, you know, yeah. You yeah. know, like, and <laughs> it's like when people call like, you know, Donald Trump like stupid. And, like, there's a, for me, there's a big difference between kind of malevolent and stupid. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? that's a good point. <laughs> they're certainly, just, they're just fucking malevolent. Yeah. You know, uh, yeah, yeah. No, I, I, I think. Uh, this I, I think that the people in power are certainly aware of the stakes that are at hand here um, and, you know, are acting partially to just uh, keep business going, to try to moderate the crash as much as they can, uh, to um, avoid mass panic, to... Uh, try to uh, subvert any kind of popular response to what is going to be like mega austerity um, mm-hmm. yeah yeah that's 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 all those are solid points I think it's it's almost certainly more malevolence than stupidity but uh, I also don't think they're particularly bright people either you know I mean it's also the case that you can get intelligent people and you put them in an organization and then organizational stupidity takes over yeah right I think maybe what I'm what I'm kind of riffing on there is kind of like the the Dominic Cummings kind of problem of like 
you know, a, a sort of middle of the road bright person, like making them all look like idiots because they kind of are, you know, and so on. But like, yeah, there's there's absolutely malevolence there that we should not mistake for just kind of buffoonery. It's 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 active, really active uh, buffoonery. I, what, what's amazing about it as well is that it's it's going to be like it, it's one that's actually hitting the wealthiest, apparently at the start, more than the working class. Because they fly everywhere because and they go on fucking yachts They're the fuckers together. flying on holidays. That's it. And they're all thinking it's grand. It was like somebody was, uh, my missus, somebody in her work, you know, she comes from, she's quite posh or something, but she was saying in her local, like, sports club or tennis club, there was these, like, people, older people coming in and saying, you know, what are you doing for, what are you going to do for, like, the coronavirus? These, like, literally the same people had just been, like, flying back from (laughs) northern Italy on holidays. And, like, you're kind of going, like, you fucking, you got a fucking coming. You've got a coming. And, you know... Uh, I hope they all flee to their bunkers, right? Because if they go to their bunkers, then you could just like, you know, get 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 a few JCBs, mm-hmm. a whole just load of sand, <laughs> just bury the fuckers. Yeah. <laughs> you just find the <laughs> ventilation shaft and just like fuck with that or whatever. Yeah. Put some long distance snipers at two miles away. And if they, if they rear their heads, we got them. You know, that's yeah. what I'm thinking. I've always thought that about the kind of like prepper thing of like, you know, Peter Thiel and all these other cunts like are like, oh, oh I'm going to get a fucking bunker in New Zealand. It's like the locals are going to find the like ventilation shaft and you're going to be fucked. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, but they, they don't think that far. Um, well, I was just I was just going to say um, we so we have a few scenarios on, on the table here that we can kind of imagine. Like one of them is that uh, the capitalist governments managed to ride out uh, the crisis and we have a massive resurgence of profitability on the back of that, which I think, uh, Tom, you and I would both agree that it will happen. I think we just maybe disagree about the degree of it. Um, And uh, the... um, other scenario is that uh yeah we get some kind of uprising of society to shake the foundations of the system on the basis of you know like they're already saying like we were just reading wendy Liu's book uh publication forthcoming abolish silicon valley and then there she mentioned how uh clay d suisse you know made it this report that uh the plutocracy report uh, no, it was one that was saying that the next crisis will wipe out financially the entire millennial generation, except for those of them who are actually capitalists, uh, or of those of us who are capitalists. Um, and so, you know, massively disenfranchised uh, people, uh, pu- like furious about the mismanagement of the situation and given no uh, outlets for political uh, reform uh, could in fact shake the system that's another scenario uh i think the final one that we talked about was the possibility of just uh kind of similar to uh byzantium uh just the disease going around and around and progressively undercutting the infrastructure of the capitalist system um and leading to kind of a long, slow breakdown. Yeah, um, like a long, a long-term catabolic breakdown, basically. Like the kind of the process goes into reverse and like just kind of starts breaking shit down, but over a relatively long sort of time. Um, and, and 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 as a part of that, like I think the response may be something like in. Uh, so, for example, we ha- we see all of the airlines collapsing, right? Uh, they're all going down. Uh, we may see them actually be consolidated and renationalized um, in order to ensure not that passenger travel continues, but to ensure that the refineries stay running and to ensure that uh, air cargo doesn't completely uh, fall out of the realm of possibility. Um, you know, those kinds of uh, reactionary responses, not reactionary in a political sense, but just reacting to the, the, the progressively deteriorating situation. And it's really just a question of like, how much are these, you know, centrists and liberals and right wingers going to hold on to the sanctity of private property in the face of it obviously not being functional? Mm hmm. 
I hope every fucking centrist, every fucking, like, uh, red Tory, every fucking Blairite dickhead, and it just hangs their head in shame and just fucking reflects on their complicity in setting up the system to be this fucking brittle and to be this uh, in the pocket of capital. And I hope that they never utter another word of that fucking centrist bullshit ever again. Um, those, those cunts those cunts have no shame no they don't they have yeah, no right. shame yeah. you know they are literally fucking soci- sociopaths here the one <laughs> last question before I, before I, I run right there's one thing we want to do like if you have to pick one individual who you hope gets it you know oh this it's a good uh, question uh, damn I mean you know what I've already got mine Bolsonaro already got it right <laughs> that's a fucker that fucker he deserved it yeah 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 okay Bolsonaro is good uh, Shane I think somebody now. like Peter Thiel or one of those fucking vipers um, would I, I actually hope Nick Land gets it I really hope it fucking kills him um, <laughs> that would be awesome but whatever what, what, what about you Tom yeah I don't know. I think it would be kind of like, it would be good if like a liberal got it, I think. <laughs> you know, like one of these really degenerate liberals like Obama or like somebody like that. One of these also rans like Swinson or some, some fucking... That's, what, that's actually who I was going to say <laughs> was fucking Swinson, the Lib Dems. I was going to say she would be, she would be brilliant if she got it. Just like a minor fucking centrist liberal wankstein. Well, Tom, Tom, I have good news for you. Uh, Justin Trudeau already has it oh god perfect so uh one of one of the the core centrist uh lib types already did get the uh disease and his wife and his and, wife and his wife his wife definitely has it they didn't bother testing him <laughs> he's, he's got um, it, yeah yeah and uh you know he's gonna be fine right he's too young that's, uh, no, that's not true that's not true it can kill young as well as old like literally, this doctor. There was a young doctor in England, in London died just yesterday. Oh, that's true. Yeah, that, no, that's true. There have been quite a few young doctors who have died. So yeah, no, he might eat it. But if he did, that would be uh, that would be quite something. Um, yeah. So, oof. I've turned into a goddamn Stalinist since this has happened. I, yeah, no Tom, joking. You're you're you're, you're pretty, no joking. You're pretty grim here. It's pretty gallows uh, situation. But you know, I. Uh, I guess I, I guess I understand given the gravity of the situation, but you know we we we, we can't go down the road of Stalinism. Mm-hmm. No, I'm joking. I am joking. But <laughs> yeah, like, I, like it's humor, my heart, I understand. But, but like I, you know, in private, I'm much worse than I am in public. Oh, this is Tom. This is Tom with the the, the moderation function turned on. Holy shit! <laughs> Damn. Damn. Oh fuck. Damn, Tom. Is it, you're sounding like Lenin here. Just joking about the bourgeoisie eating it. Uh. I know it's 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 bad. It's bad. You know. <laughs> On this episode, you heard the theme tune, The Night of the Purple Moon, by Sun Ra and his orchestra, and a dodgy cover of My Sharona by some random band I found on YouTube. Thank you for listening, and please join me for the next episode of From Alpha to Omega. This show is a member of the Emancipation Network, a Marxist podcast and research collective. Make sure to check out our network sister podcasts, General Intellect Unit, Jumpsuit Utopia, and Swapside Chats. Music